Almost got it. Welcome back to SolidWorks Live. We're coming to you live from the Partner Pavilion and Product Showcase at SolidWorks World 2019. As you can see, it's jam-packed and full of excitement. Throughout the product showcase or throughout the Partner Pavilion, you're going to find the product showcase where you can find amazing products that have been designed in SolidWorks. And along the way, over to the side here, you'll see several of our partners that have been at SolidWorks World for several years in the past. Companies like Lenovo here that are great partners. We're, as we're walking up here, folks like Proto Labs. This is a great opportunity to come to SolidWorks World to see what new technologies you can use to leverage in your organizations. So we just opened up. It's really exciting. It's, we're full of energy here. There's tons of people filling this in. So we're trying to make our way to the back of the product showcase to show what's one of the really cool highlights this year at SolidWorks World. We had it last year, but we're taking it to a whole new level this year. Let's go ahead and turn around and take a look at the uh, shop floor here. I'm gonna go, we're gonna turn the camera around and I'm gonna make my way over here to the center booth. Kinda come around this way. So once we get to the heart of this booth, we find ourselves here with Mike. Mike, good to see you again. it's good to see you. This was such a big thing. I'm going to hand you the mic. Okay. This was such a, a big and exciting part of last year's uh, Partner Pavilion. Tell us a little bit about what we're doing different this year. Oh boy, I don't even know where to start with this year. <laughs> I mean, it seems like last year ended, we started planning again all over. So, um, you know, we made it bigger and better like we always do, right? Yep. Um, so this year we actually started with this design here, okay? So as any designer does today, they go through and they 3D scan what they want to build, right? Yep. So we scanned this engine block last year. Okay. And then we worked towards uh, building a serpentine drive system for this engine. Okay. Okay. Now, as we all go and we design parts, the next thing is, is how do I build it? Yeah, where do I get these made? Right? So we went to uh, make and we sourced manufacturing. Where can people find Make before we do that? That's a really good question. We should probably ask the yeah. gentleman who's in charge of it, right? <laughs> All right. So I'm going to pass this over. Okay. Hi, Trevor. Howdy. I'm Jeremy. Good to meet you, Jeremy. So uh, tell us here a little bit about 3D experience in Marketplace Make. Gotcha. So uh, from uh, Marketplace Make here, we can actually generate orders, uh, put them into the Delmia Works system, and process them through and actually produce them. In house. If you look around, you'll see little uh, towers sitting on top of the machines. And what those are, are relaying part complete data from the machines back to our system to say the parts are done. Uh, we collect that data. When it's ready to ship, we ship it. Okay. Yeah, it's full uh, closed loop feedback. So this is anybody who needs to get a part made, they can use this as a resource to find out where they where they can find a manufacturer, how to get that part made, yep. right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's the hardest part, right? If you're yeah. a guy designing that, where do I get it made? Who do I know? How, how are they verified? What if right? I don't have a supply chain already and I need exactly. to... Exactly. Or what if I only need to get one made? Or maybe I need a thousand made, right? Right. Yeah, because it all depends on how you're going to manufacture it, right? The more parts you need, the on-demand, timing schedules, all that stuff comes up. Okay. So being able to design and plan is a pretty big thing. Um, so if we go from where we were at here, then all these machines you see in the facility are all making different components of this. Okay. So would you like to see? I would that love process? to see what that process looks like. So but before we go on, all these parts were designed by folks here at SolidWorks? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the cool thing about the design is we started with the concept, right? We have the scan image, we have the all the data in SolidWorks, yeah. right? So from there, we started working through, you know, like we normally do, sketches, features, yeah. streets, bosses, all that. And then we went over to simulation. So we used a little bit of topology to make sure that this is optimized correctly, right? Because yep. we want it light and strong, but we also want it cool. It's yeah. got to be cool. Um, so fitting in all the clearances, running topology, we know that we had a pretty optimum design for the stresses that's going to happen from the serpentine mode. Okay. Um, well, let's go take a peek at some of these parts being made. Okay. Where, where do we start? We're going to go to the complex one first. All right. So, so let's go over this way. Let's go, uh, let's go for a quick walk here. Yep. 
Here, we're going to sneak in here behind you with the camera. So, this is one of my favorite machines. Yep. Um, being a Master Air guy, you know, it's, it's cool. <laughs> um, so, this is a Master Air MX330, and this is actually where we're creating that top dog bone I was talking about that yeah. we ran through topology. Yep. Um, so, this actually starts as one big block of billet. And then we machine it down and we're using, you know, aerospace automotive type tabbing technology to where we're holding it. We get down to this end, we have this little tab that we break off. It's just like, you know, the model cars you played with as a kid, sure. popping them out. So the cool thing about this is, you know, we can index it all, we can reach all sides. So we're keeping quality up, we're keeping surface finish up. Um, and the nice thing is it can just sit here and run. So as we look at going back to like IQMS, we can determine when this machine's done, get a flag, we can figure out how many it needs to make. So it's, it's a pretty cool process. And we're driving all the machines here with IQMS, yep. correct? Yep. So we are keeping track of the production schedule, the number of runs, everything that we're yep. doing, correct? Yep, tooling, material, everything that you're gonna run in your business. So if you get an order for a thousand of these, you know how long it's gonna take in each machine so you can make the right decisions. It's that non-emotional type feedback, right? Because yeah. as a pride guy, I know I can make this run faster, but data may tell me different. Sure. All right, where are we gonna head next? So we're gonna go to our next mill. So for our next mill, we're actually creating several different parts in this machine. Um, and I'll let the, the gentleman over here talk in just a second, but this is pretty cool because they have a quick fixture set up. So for some of those brackets that we have below the top dog bone, we can actually create multiple parts very quickly in this. Um, and to explain a little bit more, I'm gonna bring Chris in over here. All right. Um, because he can talk about it way better than I can. <laughs> hey Chris, welcome. Yeah, thank Good you. Good to meet you. Good to meet you. Yeah, <laughs> all right. So tell us a little bit about what we're doing here. Yeah, sure. So what we're doing, we're, we're machining a number of different brackets um, for the, the engine block. As okay. well as uh, on our lathe over there, over there we're doing a, uh, a pulley. Okay. And so what's happening here is because um, we're doing so many parts and our machine is not as, as large as some of the more industrial machines, we're doing a pallet change system. So okay. we've got a single pallet in there and we're swapping out as we need to change parts. Okay. So we're just we're machining out each part, switch everything out, and then you're ready for the next part. So did you say we're machining multiple parts at a time out of a single piece of billet or you're just doing different different no, it's, parts? It's, each, each one is, is, because it's a fairly large part, and, okay. our, and our travel is just not quite big enough to okay. machine all of I, them. So yeah, so we're doing um, specific brackets at a time on each different Okay. Pallet. You Great. actually see the pallets over here. Yeah, yeah. The okay, we'll, right bring them, we'll bring them into camera here. Oh, so sure. let's, let's grab some of these. So these are what the parts are looking like when we're coming out of the machine with these, right? Yep, so this one is, uh, the first stop is done, and then we'll flip that part. And, and then you'll we'll do the, do the back up, side of that? And that one will be ready to go right on the edge. Okay, what are some of the other examples we have here? So those, um, here, so let... these guys, so these guys are the are the the pulleys for the water pump. Yep. Um, and what we're doing here is because we turn them on our lathe, but then we need to put um, holes there. in them. So we bring it over here with this fixture. We can do multiples at a time with that one. Okay. Um, and like I said, just because our travel isn't quite big enough, so we run out of room. So that's yeah. what we have to do. But if you look here, we have different. Um, we have a pallet system. So this this part is done both from a standard from a flat block. We lock it in with these mighty bite pieces. Yep. And then once that side's done, we flip it over and it clamps down with some more Mighty Byte fixturing to machine out the other side. Okay. So these are all the parts that we're doing on this machine here. Yeah. So okay. we're going to the mill, or the next lathe. We're going to go down to the lathe now. Being Actually, it looks like uh, it's, go ahead. Yeah. No, yeah, I was going to say, so yeah, so this is our, uh, this is our 15L slam pro lathe. So this is uh, probably a, it's one of our larger machines. Um, the nice thing about our machines is they all run on standard hustle power. So okay. both of these machines are 220 single phase, it's nothing crazy. Um, but what we're doing here is because the, uh, because the pulley has, has to be machined on both sides, yep. so we have two different ops with this one. So we're doing one op to do the, the ID on the inside, and then we'll do a few of those, and then we swap out the chuck, and then we do the outside by gripping it on the inside. Okay. These Sounds look like great. <laughs> no, 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 not at all. I totally understand. So you've got to bring this in here and then you do right, another exactly, operation where you're exactly. switching it around. Right. Now, are we tracking the operations that we're doing on these machines with the IQMS as well? Um, for some of the machines, we can. Okay. For these right now, we're just tracking every the overall time the part, part switch. Every yep. part. Okay. Yep. Very cool.
Thank you. Thank you so yeah, much. Yeah, good to meet you. <laughs> we're, where are we going to move on to uh, next, We're going to move down to this 3D printer. So, okay. as a company, you know, we're always producing today and planning for tomorrow, right? Absolutely. So, in this machine here, we're actually printing an intake manifold for that engine for our next design, So, right? a really complex part. It's a yep. lot more complex than just yep. having to machine some pieces. So, right. a 3D printer is a great technology to quickly create these. Yep, absolutely. And while we're manufacturing we're actually dreaming right that's yeah. the best part we're not holding up our cnc machines to try to do something like this sure um so this guy's got a little bit of a build time because it's a little complex so we can come <laughs> yeah. back later in the week and check on it yeah but, sure yeah 15 hours left yeah. to go on that's that the one total time is 24 hours for this okay yeah so we're doing the two ends or 24 hours the center is going to take about another 40. okay because um, it's got all the plenums and everything in it if so. we bring the camera down a little bit you can actually see the uh the parts uh kind of printing in there so not a whole lot's going on those, but uh, they're working their way up there. Yeah, absolutely. All right, now I see our friend John Milbury back here has got uh, some coolant spraying everywhere. What, John, yeah. good to see you good again. Good to see you, how are you? I'm fantastic, what are you doing? We're punching holes right now. All right. We're building uh, one of these large crank pulleys. Wow, that's a, that's a pretty big part. It is a big part. We're doing this in two stages. Okay. And we're doing this with uh, some very large soft pie jaws. Okay. So if you look right there. On the table over there, yeah. You'll see that that's what we're actually holding this part with. And you had told me earlier it's because you're dealing with so much centrifugal force you have to use these really large jaws? We do. We use these large jaws and we've actually got to turn our chuck pressure up and we've got to limit our RPM because the centrifugal force will actually cause the chuck to open while we're machining. Wow. Which could be dangerous, so we've got that limited. And um, we're having a great time over here machining these. So this is a great finished part, but it looks like this is, we're, the this is this, where we're starting from. This so is, this is significantly there's heavier. There's a significant <laughs> difference, and there's a lot of metal. But what's interesting is, is we can remove this much metal and machine this entire part in 10 minutes. Wow. The entire part. So. It's, um, that sounds like a fairly good turnaround time. For it a is a like fairly that. good turnaround <laughs> time. So yeah, um, we're having a great time over here. And um, uh, it's a two and a half axis lathe. It's by Herco. The tooling's been supplied by Seco, which they've done. draws people. People love to see how we make things. Yeah. Um, I like to say that the shop floor is really where our dreams come to life. Yeah, it's, uh, you know? you, everybody can design something in 3D, but to see the physical parts yes. and hold it, that's the real reward, right? It is, and it's incredible, so. All right, well, I think we're gonna head on and look at something yep, else here, Yep, we got one more build station, and then we're gonna show some cool inspection. Okay, so, so where's the, the The last build station we have here is, um, is the Rise 3D printer. So you remember yep. earlier I was talking about those standoffs that are over there on the yep. engine? So those were all done here on the Rise printer. And I can't do it justice without bringing in the expert. Yeah. So <laughs> let's bring in the expert Hi, here. Keyshore. Hi. So Keyshore, we're actually gonna spend a good deal of time one-on-one uh, -on -one with you later on in the week yeah. where we're going to do an interview with you. But in terms of talking about the shop floor experience, tell us a little bit about Rise and the role you guys are playing here. So, so as uh, you know, he mentioned just a minute before, Manufacturing is a combination of all, machining, 3D printing, uh, and you need to 3D print to very high tolerances and precision. That's what RISE brings. It prints parts in uh, very high strength plastics, twice as strong as ABS, in full carbon, colored, trusted parts. And so you will see on the, on the engine, few parts printed on RISE, and we go from there. This is great. Well. We're going to be spending some time with you again, like yeah. as I mentioned later on this week. Stay tuned on for to SolidWorks Live on Facebook and YouTube. And we're going to get really in depth about some of the cool features that Rise Fantastic. is bringing to the market. Awesome. 
Keyshore, as always, Jeremy, thank you so much you. for spending a few minutes Mike, with us. Amazing. Thanks, guys. So we've seen how some of the parts are getting made and kind of managed through this process. You mentioned yep. inspection, right? Yep. So as these once these parts get finished, we have to take a look at are they meeting our QA needs yep. and so forth. So where are we yep. going to uh, go, we'll go here? right here? We're gonna so part of IQMS is we have to know how, to, how many parts we make, how many are bad, right? right? Because that affects planning and production and costs and all the. Yeah, you could. Going, I could right? say you can make ten thousand parts in X amount that's of time, right. but if I have a ten percent failure rate, that's not yeah. going to meet my demands. Yeah, it's not always how fast you go. <laughs> <laughs> um, so for scanning technologies. it from a different position because you can see that we have reference points around the edges of that uh, of that scan area so those allow us to put the part in different positions and scan uh, multiple times and match the data that we collect each time to itself so that we can get a full 360 degree view of what we're looking at so I don't know if the camera picks this up live, but what we're seeing here is we're seeing different light patterns being shown across the, across the part, and then you're scanning that in real time to get the accurate measurements of these parts. Correct. Now, so what happens if this part passes or fails this inspection? I kind of saw this earlier. So you, we were also highlighting the part, correct? Right. Correct. So now we're going to take that measured data Oh, yes, sorry. sorry. We're going to take that measured data and compare it to the CAD model for the part. So there will be a tolerance base in that CAD model. And here shortly, when you come back, we're going to show on the model where it varies from a perfect part. And so as we go back to this part, I need to know if all the dimensions meet the tolerances. And I'm assuming the gray or the green color on there signifies that this is a a part that's within tolerance? That is correct, and you can set your colors to different tolerances so that people, some people just want green or red, go, no, go, or yep. you can set each color to a specific deviation of thousands of an inch. So this is a very easy to understand visual indicator as I'm manufacturing my parts, whether they're meeting or failing my inspection requirements. That is true. This is, a, this is really cool technology. I've never thought of integrating AR with the inspection process. We always think of it in terms of working and visualizing 3D models, but you guys are bringing it into the manufacturing world and providing a really cool way to quickly understand my part, my quality concerns. Absolutely, we can also project text and information as well as the color chart. Well, this is, uh, this is really cool. Uh, where can folks at home find out more about this technology? Uh, www.envision3d.com. N-V-I-S-I-O-N, number three, letter D, dot com. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Well, thanks so much for uh, joining us here today. I'm going to go back to Mike. Yeah. So, Mike, do we have anything else left yep, on this? We have this? two more we stations. We have two more stations. Yep. Okay. So, we'll come over here. So if you remember, we talked about at the beginning, we scanned that engine, right? Yep. So the, the folks here from Creaform actually went through and scanned the engine, but then they're also here now showing inspection. Okay. Showing how you can actually, you know, look at the part that was machined and compare it to the model and then see a live color map in the same way that you would scan it for engineering use. Okay, so he's holding this handheld device and as he's doing that, he's basically scanning that part and then in real time off to the left hand side, that model is showing up on screen. Yep. This is yep. Uh, so. This is a, a different way to kind of do what we were doing before. This is really fast, real time, trying to understand my part quality. Yep. yep. 
And the nice thing about this one is um, it, it overlays it on the CAD model so you can see it on the screen. Now, the nice thing about the AR is you can put in work instructions to show someone on the physical part how to do instructions. Yeah, he was saying he could project yeah. text right down onto yeah. it as they were doing um, it. This one is really nice. What's cool about it is is if you see the eyes up there on that bar, yep. anything in that field of view, it knows its position. So like when we scan that engine, what was cool about it is we could scan one side of it, rotate the engine in real time, and continue scanning because it sees anything in that field of view versus an old school scanner. And now what I notice when I look at this part, I don't see little dots all over the place or nope. anything like that. It can just look at the part yep. as is and understands how it works. Yeah, if you, see the, if you see those dots on the table, yep, those eyes are looking at it and it knows anything in that space, which is pretty cool. Yeah, absolutely. So you mentioned we had one more station yep. to take a peek we at have, here? We have more of the, the traditional inspection, right? Yeah. The, the five axis CNC probing. Um, so the folks from Hexagon are, are doing that same component where they have the part, uh, this one's a 3D printed sample, for example, All right. uh, the pre-inspection. Well, why don't we bring the camera yeah. in around here so they can see this being uh, going through this process. So from the SOLIDWORKS model and comparing it to the 3D printer, they're going through and doing you know, the, the comparison using uh, PCD miss on this one. Okay. okay. Uh, at 6 p.m. there will be a presentation at the Certified Environmental so when we're going through there, it's touching off across that entire, is it doing individual points or is it touching the entire surface as it's going through uh, there? That would be a question that we'll have to have the, the gentleman from Hexagon answer. So your question was, as it touches this part, is it touching specific data points or is it continually touching? Yeah, or is it continually touching? So it is a continuous surface. touch. So okay. it is going through the controller and reading essentially a force through okay. a mechanical system. And it is collecting hundreds of thousands of points, depending on the size of the scan, which we can then relay back to CAD. Okay. And then throughout all these processes of the machining, but more importantly, the inspection process, everything that we're doing here with these parts is being pushed back through IQMS. Yep. Yep, so the cool thing about IQMS is like with PCDMIS, for example, we can dump that report automatically. So when it finishes this, it shows up there. So I could be on my cell phone, pull up, and I know exactly where my factory's at. I know where it's at, where all my machining's at. I know if the guy's taking a nap on second shift. <laughs> I, I know all that. So you can go take lunch break while everybody else in here is still working, and you can know that exactly. production yeah. is still moving forward. Yeah, that's part of being a manager, right? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So, Mike, where can people learn more about what we're doing with CAM and IQMS and all those other things? The best place is always the website, right? Yep. SolidWorks.com. Um, yep. We've also added a bunch of content to my.solidworks. Uh, okay. Com, so you can go through, you can go through the training and learning. And then obviously we're SolidWorks World. We're going to talk about it for the next couple of days and have lots of examples. So we, I've been telling the folks on SolidWorks Live, we're going to be making announcements throughout the whole week about what we're yep. doing with some of these great partnerships with the 3D Experience products and IQMS and different things like that. So make sure you turn tune in tomorrow morning at 8.30 a.m. Central Time when we're going to be live streaming general session on YouTube, Facebook, and the SolidWorks World website. It's going to be a great opportunity to see all this technology get explained and really understand how it's how it's going to benefit our customers. Yeah, there's some really cool examples coming up. I can't yeah. wait for everybody to see it. There's other new products they're going to be announcing yeah. too. Really cool, yeah. exciting stuff. Yeah. Well, Mike, I want to thank you so much for giving us this tour of the shop floor experience here at SolidWorks World. It's always really exciting. And I see a lot of people grabbing a beverage and some food, and I think it's my turn to finally go grab something to eat. Understandable. Thanks again. All right. Thanks, Mike. And with that, we're going to go ahead and sign off, and I'm going to go grab a snack. We'll see the rest of you later on.